Hi everyone. I wanted to make a quick follow-up to the last video that I posted, which is the one gap main bus tutorial video. And I wanted to show you specifically how I run my production lines and how I lay out my assemblers, since a couple of you asked for that in the comments. Uh, one of the other things that I saw in the comments was the fact that a lot of people were disparaging the use of a main bus because planetary logistics are more efficient. Uh, to which I say, I entirely agree with you. Planetary logistics are incredibly powerful in this game, and if you really want to build some top-tier setups, that's what you ought to use. However, there is just something preposterously wonderful about a gigantic main bus that spans a huge amount of the planet, and it just makes me happy. And I know that there are a lot of you who probably also feel this way, and this, this is why I'm making these videos, is to show you if you're interested in doing something like this, uh, this is the way that I figured out to do it. So I absolutely encourage main buses or planetary logistics or interplanetary logistics. You've got a whole ton of options in this game. And that's why this game is so cool is because it gives you that opportunity. Uh, but in specific for me, I enjoy the main bus topology. So I want to show you how I make mine. So for starters, we need to have some kind of baseline assumption. And that baseline assumption is that we've got smelters already set up somewhere to feed our bus. Uh, so let's just do that. Oh, thank you, autosave. Let's do that kind of for starters here and just assume, okay, well, we are in the middle of bendy terrain, but we'll make it work. So let's just say for a second that we've got our smelters uh, off on this side above here, and we've got them feeding us resources. In specific, because the trivial case is a single belt of, a, of an individual resource, uh, the more complicated one is two belts of an individual resource, and that's what I want to show you. So, for example, let's say, just like my bus over here, I've got two lanes of iron and two lanes of copper. I'm going to show you how I would go about taking lines off of those to make production. So, for starters, let's just take a really basic material like gears. It just takes one iron, you get one gear back. There's only one input resource, there's only one output, and you can put that right back onto the bus. So, let me show you how I do that. So, for starters, let's say that these are our smelter inputs. So, the first thing that we need to do uh, is get everything onto a bus. And what I mean by when I say a bus is basically just a whole bunch of lines that are running parallel to each other. So we put in some splitters here so that we can uh, nice and easily raise them up to the top. You could also do this with uh, just sloped belts and have this just basically slope right up to a height of two, but uh, I like my splitters. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to try and pull off a bus tap. So let's just take an assembling machine really fast, just look at what we need to do here. So if we want to make gears, we need to put in iron on one side and take gears out on the other side. And we would also like to get those gears back onto the bus so that we can use them to supply other machines. So if you just kind of think about it, we're going to want our input coming this way and our output going this way. So we need to find a way to tap into the main bus to do that. Uh, so the way to, that I do this is basically you take your uh, most constraining option. So in this instance, I can't have the belt any, go any closer than the splitter right here. So we're going to look at this in the deconstruction mode here. We're going to go by one and then by two. So two spaces ahead is going to be the start of the next splitter. So we're going to go one, two, three, because that's the width of the splitter. We're going to do that for all of the things that we need to pull off. So in this case, we're trying to pull off iron to make gears. So we're going to pull off both of our iron machines. So next what we do is we place down splitters here, and this is going to actually form our bus tap about the resources that we're actually taking off of the bus. Uh, so firstly, what I need to do is I need to reconnect uh, the bus to this so that I can get the pass through through these lines. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our tap off of the bus down this way. So basically you take it out and then you bend it right around and here's our input. Now the other thing to note is that because I'm using two belts here, um, obviously if you just wanted to do a, a single belt resource, this is exactly what it would look like. You use a splitter, you keep it going off, and then you just kind of take this one out where you need it. But if you have the same resource spread across multiple belts, then you're going to need to do a little bit more of a complicated bus tap, which is what I showed off a little bit in the earlier video. So from here, what we're going to do is we're actually going to connect these two machines together back here. Uh, and this is why we use this extra gap right here, is so that we actually have room to bend this belt around. Uh, so now that we've done this, you can see that this machine, if you look at the input here, it's getting half from the top belt and half of half from the other belt. So 25% in total because it's being split once here. So 50% goes, continues around along the bus and 50% reaches into here. So it's kind of splitting from both of these. Now, 
that could work. You could just leave it like this. But in the way that I like to do things, if you look at your smelters visually and see which ones are active and which ones are not, you could kind of get a visual representation of how much of the resources you, of those smelters that you're using. So what I like to do for these double bus taps is I like to set a filter, or excuse, excuse me, set a port status on the splitter to prioritize the top input, which is going to prioritize the inputs from the smelting array. What that means is that we're going to prioritize using all of the materials from one smelting array before we start using materials from the other. So like I said in the previous video, uh, this inner lane is kind of the sacrificial lane. It, it just keeps this lane supplied as we go along down the bus. Uh, but that's basically what a two to one bus tap looks like. And like I said, you can just uh, put one of these down and use this tap here if you're just doing a single resource. So now let's talk about placement of the assembly machines. So the way that I like to do this uh, is specific for a couple of reasons. I can't have an assembling machine right here because what if I needed to split off for the next one? The splitter is just gonna collide and it's not gonna work there. So I need at least a spacing of one. And then if we do this and I wanted to bend a belt around, maybe for my output, you can see that once again, we would need to have a belt right here and the splitter still would not fit. So what I do is I take my assembling machines and I do a spacing of two from the very left that it could be. So here's one, here's zero, here's one, and here's two. So this is where my first assembling machine is gonna be. And then from here, I just kind of stack them as close as they can go. And I generally do four in the early game and I upgrade from there. So then what we do is we just extend the belt this way. Uh, and I like to kind of distribute it nicely in the middle here. So we take our sorters and I just like to use the, the middle input for these. Now, note that you don't actually need this belt right here. I just placed it there for aesthetic purposes because I like that it, everything is kind of collinear here. So now we've got our machines that should be making us gears. And as a reminder, you can use the left and right um, angle bracket keys to copy and paste designs from machines. So I'm going to press the left angle bracket key, which is also the comma key here. And you can see recipe copied gear. If I press the right angle bracket or the period key, on the subsequent machines, you can see that I've now pasted those re those uh, recipes to this as well. Uh, so now we look, gears only have one output. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that same output and we're going to take it off of this way. So let's go ahead and grab some more sorters, pull this directly off of here, no filter needed. And now we have the question of how can we get this back onto the bus? So for starters, we can extend our bus a little bit here just to show you what we're working with. All right, so now we want to get this back onto the bus, but we also want to still be cognizant of the fact that we want kind of other assemblers to be pretty much as close as possible. Uh, so the way that I do this is I like to have Tesla towers um, basically spaced along these four block ranges. So pretty much like this. So what that means is then I have my next belt going at a one gap space from this as well. So basically I leave a space of one between this and the next bus tap. So if we look at what this means, say that this one needed to use iron, that means that my splitter would basically need to be right here. So we need to bend all the way back around to make sure that we miss the splitter if it needed to be here. So for that, I'm gonna go one more here and we're gonna go all the way up just to touch the input belt. And then what we can do is we can bring it all the way underneath the bus and we can just kind of bring it back out this way. So now we need to connect it to the splitter and we can do that by grabbing a splitter, placing it here and connecting it up. Now, here's an important thing to note. There is an extra belt right here. If I have a line that's running this way, I can grab a splitter, put it right here and connect that directly and that will work. However, I leave an extra gap of one because what this allows me to do is make all of the taps on this line for this next row of assemblers collinear. So if I wanted to put one right here, right? This is if, if I had just put it here, I'll just show you. If I put it directly right here, not there, right here, then if I wanted to make all of these collinear, I would need to put it this one basically right here. But once again, if it's a double bus tap, you would not have space for this little loop around here to actually do the double bus tap. So that is why I space it by an additional one so that, let's see, is there anything that uses both iron and gears? I'm sure there is. 
Electric motors, for example, is a good as a good example of that. Uh, so let's say that we wanted to make electric motors next. Um, we can also assume for the sake of argument then uh, that we've got another bus line here that's got our electromagnets on it. So let's just, it should be up a, a tile, but you understand what I'm saying. So now let's say that the next thing that we wanted to make was the these engine units. So we have three inputs. So we can go ahead and draw these three inputs that we're going to need. And once again, place down our assembling machines. And we can draw our output, which is going to look like this. Now the question is, we need iron and gears and our electromagnets, which are going to be over here. Here's the other really cool thing about doing this topology is because I need gears, I can actually just immediately bend it right back around. And I can have the, the bus part of it continuing on, but I can still use this as a valid bus tap, even right after it's getting put onto the bus in the first place. Uh, so we need to go from inside to outside for each of these input belts. Uh, so let's do the iron first. And you, as you can see, I left an extra gap there to make sure that we can bend the belts around. So we got a space here and then the actual splitter. So here's oop, one too many. There we go. So we grab our two splitters. We place them down. We reconnect. We do our little loop around the back. We set our input priority, if you so choose. And then we just bend it on the line. So here's our iron input. We can do the same thing for gears that we just got here. Just make sure to leave an extra space right here so that it uh, bends over and you, you've got the correct connection here. And then, like I said, for the sake of argument, we could assume that we've got um, you know magnets coming in or electromagnets coming in somewhere from over here. We would just basically put that on the third line and you can imagine that uh, this splitter right here carrying that on subsequent bus lines would be there. And then we just basically keep doing the same thing. You hook up your sorters, you set your recipes, you bring this back out one farther than you need, place a gap or place an extra belt here, uh, and then you are ready to line up your splitters for the rest of the main bus, just like so. So this is how I make my production lines. If you have any further questions about this, feel free to let me know in the comments. If you have any other thoughts or ideas, uh, let me know as well. The only last thing that I'll mention is that because I leave this space here, like I said, this is where I like to put my, my towers, uh, and this is something that you, you can keep doing like this. Uh, but that's all I've got for you today, so thank you very much, and uh, talk to you later. Thanks.